What's up friends? Welcome back to Kimmy TV, tips and tricks living your best life. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to pass AMP1, tips and tricks, okay? So before I start this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget that you can watch this video at increased speed because it really helps when you watch my video all the way throughout. And also don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bells so that you will never miss a video. All right guys, so maybe you have decided to take AMP1 because you are going to school for nursing, maybe you're going to school to be a doctor, maybe you're getting ready to take your MCATs, maybe you're gonna be a physician assistant, whatever. Um, but a lot of times when you're going into the medical field, you're going to have to take AMP1. So I took AMP1 twice, and I'll explain why in a future vlog, so stay tuned for that. But I took AMP1 twice. The first one I didn't finish, and the second one I actually finished. So I definitely have um, a lot of tips on how to pass, not only pass, but ace AMP1. I know um, in every state, AMP1 might be a little different for everybody, and in every college it may be a little different. But these these generalized tips I believe can help all across the board okay so first of all I'm gonna um, talk about what we covered um, so the things that we covered was um, basically um, from the anatomical um, biochemistry um, layer of the human body so we talked about atoms we talked about subatomic atoms electrons neutrons protons we talked about different proteins and how they are made um, how is DNA formed um, and then we progressed to tissues we put we did um, muscles we did the skeletal system and we did the nervous system um, so that's all that we did okay so the first advice I would give about taking AMP1 is taking it in the summer. Yes, take it in the summer. So like I said before, I when I when the first time I took AMP1, it was actually um, in a full semester. And honestly, when you take AMP1 in a full semester, it's just a lot more studying. It's a lot more dragging along. And the thing is, I feel like a lot of people, um, when they talk about the prerequisite for whatever major they're going into, they say, oh, I took English, sociology, psychology, and say AMP1 like it's nothing. Um, I don't mean to scare you guys, but AMP1 is not just nothing. It requires a lot of studying it requires a lot of hard work I'm not gonna lie and sometimes it could test you you know but it is the basis it's the um, fundamentals it's the foundation to whatever field you're gonna go to so whether you're a nursing major or um, a PA major it is essential that you pass it and it is essential that you try to grasp as much knowledge because it's gonna come up in whatever if you want you honestly um, from my teachers standpoint and I kind of agree with it too it's it's more boring than AMP2 even though I haven't taken AMP2 yet but it's, it's, it's it, it could be kind of boring it could be interesting but it could be kind of boring because it's a lot of facts it's a lot of just like let's lay this cement let's lay this foundation let's lay this groundwork but it is very important um, just like when you're building a house even though you have to put insulation so that the house is warm for you it may be the boring part but it's an important part so the first tip I will definitely give is just know that it is it's it's really all about memorizing and um but sometimes you don't have time to memorize and sometimes you need to know tricks and ways to memorize so one of the major ways that i memorized especially when it came to uh, when it comes to like dealing with the tissues is dr parker okay so if any of you guys um, have this, um, basically in my program, I had to do something called a bone practicum. Now, a bone practicum is when they they mix you like we you know we have 206 bones in the body. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they mix a whole bunch of bones and they put it on a table and then like they give you two minutes each and you have to ding go to the next slide, ding go to the next slide. So you have all these bones and you have to actually identify the bones and it could be kind of tricky because the humerus could look like the femur could look like the tibia could look like the fibia. But guys, I kid you not, I would not have passed that practicum if it wasn't for Dr. Parker. So if you go on YouTube, you search Dr. Parker. She's basically an AMP1 teacher and she recorded her lectures. And also when it comes to classifying the tissues, she really breaks it down like a science, guys. She makes it so much easier to learn and understand. And I'm not saying that I don't like my teachers. I love my teachers. They were sweethearts. I think my teachers were excellent. But sometimes the way you learn may not be the way people teach. And honestly, in college, you can't really say that. Like, I mean, I guess you can. You could report to the dean or whatever. But from my experience, 
I feel like a lot of times in college it's all about teaching yourself. If you are to have a teacher that you actually learn from and that you, not to say that I didn't learn anything, but if you had a teacher that you actually learned 100%, like everything is okay, um, then you're lucky. But for the most part, when you're taking a class, especially when you have already paid for it, you know, you're already a certain amount of weeks into it, it's your responsibility to make sure that you got the information that you understand because that teacher got their degree, so you need to get your degree, right? So Dr. Parker is one of those teachers, like you can, like anybody can literally understand what she's um teaching you know so and if you can't understand her you could also google other people but dr parker is really good so dr parker is one of the major resources i've used she really helped me identify the tissues she made it easy to the point where i didn't really have to memorize like actually sit there and repeat words over and over till i got it she made me really like understand the material because a lot of times if you could understand the material you memorize it by default so dr parker definitely for tissues for the bones especially and just just search if you're learning the nervous system just search amp dr Dr. Parker nervous system like just read just watch her videos before you um, dive into your um, study notes and that's another advice um, I honestly and this is hard for me to say because I'm kind of like type A personality so I'm kind of specific about certain stuff and the number one thing that really bothered me when it was when I heard some people say don't read your textbook don't read your textbook don't read your textbook let me show you my textbook I based so guys, I basically bought this big book for nothing. Look at this big book, and you know it's expensive. I bought this big book for nothing, and because I didn't really use it. Now, the first time I took AMP one, I did kind of use it, but and it did help a bit. But honestly, I feel like you have to kind of know where your teacher is getting their questions and answers now the first test granted will be the hardest one because you never took a test from that teacher before unless you took like a bio class from him or microbio then okay but you never you don't know their teaching style therefore you don't know how their test is going to be set up but nine times out of ten i feel like studying from the textbook is too much like they even my teacher said that they they put it like as if you're about to be a doctor like they go through every little single thing and yeah it's great to learn and get to read it but like honestly like if you're studying like to pass this class and to get the highest grades that you could get into your nursing program you could get into your pa program like you need to know what's on the test like you don't have time to read everything after you read it then you go back and read like to really comprehend but when you're in the test you know i would say definitely use your powerpoints use what powerpoints take good notes that's another great tip a lot of the things that um was on my test and now every teacher is different like some teachers may put the test like for example my lecture teacher he a lot of the things that was on the test was in the lecture slides you know and you know he helped us review for the test so that was helpful but for my lab teacher a lot of things he says was in the textbook but mostly what he says so he's like okay this is what's not like he like he didn't say this was gonna be on test but a lot of things that he says in class and also when a teacher repeats something over and over like if i say this phone is an android this phone's an android blah 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 blah. remember this phone's an android most likely i'm gonna ask you on the test what kind of phone is this so that's something to keep in mind um when the teacher repeats something over and over it usually means it's going to be on a test the next tip i would say is one resource I really used was Khan Academy. So Khan Academy was actually very helpful for me. Um, they broke it down, especially when it comes to like, you know, the cell membrane and um, the potential, like how, uh, how can I say, like the potential for the cell membrane, like how the action potential is um, created and how the nerve, nerve, um, how the nerve synapses into the muscle that kind of thing how the sacromella stores calcium releases calcium like all those different sequence of events was definitely made simpler like telling a story through when i was watching videos on that in khan academy so if you go to khan academy it's it's free all their videos are free you just create an account and um i create an account and i watched videos on the nervous system because at that time i was studying the nervous system and it was kind of confusing like when you're looking at a bunch of slides that's what i'm saying i'm not going to tell you just to read the slide and that's it you have to understand their material so that you could remember it easier so khan academy k-h-a-a-n academy really helped because i would search khan academy the nervous system and then i would watch videos on topics that i didn't understand like 
the different types of neurons. You have your unipolar neurons, you have your bipolar neurons, you have your motor neurons, your motor neurons, where is it mo most, my, most likely located? Or the brain, the cerebrum, like, um, where, <laughs> where is it located? Like, where is the... Um, uh, where is the central sulcus? Where is the lateral sulcus? Where is this? Where is that? Where is the frontal lobe? Pyreatal lobe? All those lobes. Khan Academy really breaks it down, guys. So you know, things doesn't have to be. Things don't have to be difficult. You just have to understand what kind of learner you are. Another tip I gave will give you is um, use a recording device if it's really hard for you to understand a teacher like okay so I'm not making fun of anybody because some people say I have an accent my parents have an accent so why would I make fun of some people I love um but sometimes if accents are too thick for you to understand or if it's like kind of hard one thing you can do is that you can record the lecture and then after you like hear it you can actually understand what they're saying but you know still they were really nice teachers like I said um, but and they would repeat themselves if I asked them, which was helpful. But if you don't understand what they're saying, like it could be really hard. Just record what they say, but be patient, don't be frustrated, just keep on. All right, so some of the things we did in lab I want to share is that we dissected sheep's brain and pig eye, and oh my gosh, that was so gross, it smelled so bad. But um, that's some of the things that we did in lab, and um. For that, for lab, I would say, and we look through cells, I would say, just like try your best, um, try your best to look at it. But I feel like lab is just like, just to show you, you know what I mean? The lab tests that I had really counted the most and really was what, what I cared about. The lab to me, I, I, I felt like it was just a show. I'm like, okay, let's just play house, let's just pretend like we're scientists and let's see it. So honestly, I think that's what the lab is about. And then the test was really the meat. And also for um, the bones, um, something I wish I would have used, which is something that my classmate used, something called Atlas, especially if you have your bone practicum. There's an app called Atlas and it basically allows you to view the bones from different angles so that you can understand the bone more. So after you finish your Dr. Parker, go on um, the bones and look and look at Atlas and also ask your teacher questions like oh what will most likely be on the test like what will you really put on the test you know not all teachers will be able to tell you not all teachers are willing to tell you like oh make sure you study everything but focus on this focus on that but if they can like why not ask for help and guys you know um yeah so guys that's all my tips today on um passing amp one i'm so happy i'm finally finished by the grace of god um I, it was quite a journey especially this month it was so hard but i made it through and i wish you guys the best of luck in your amp bye